Hi, this is David. Today we're going to talk about using Power Automate, formerly known as Microsoft Flow, to create a workflow. And this time we're going to create one from scratch. Last time we used a template for doing this, but now we'll do it from scratch. I go to to do this. I go to flow.microsoft.com, and I click in the menu on My Flows. And up here, I want to specify New, and I can do Automated from Blank. Several of these are from blank. The automated actually allows you to specify some trigger. Instant would be a click of a button to do it. Scheduled, of course, would be on a timer. And business process has some templates involved in that. All right, I'll give this a name. I'm going to call it DG Test Flow. And for the trigger, I want to use SQL Server. So I'll come in here and specify search for SQL Server. And I want to, what I want to have happen is whenever an item is inserted into a, a table in SQL Server, that I want that to be the trigger to kick off this workflow. So I select that when an item is created, SQL Server, and click on Create right here. Now it's going to ask me, it says Test Connection Fail, because I have entered information here, and I have to tell it which SQL Server table I want to uh, be monitoring. Now I've already gone into Azure and created an Azure SQL database. If you don't know how to do that, I have actually have a video on that in this series. And I can grab the server name and the databases from here. But what I want to do is to create a new connection to that SQL Server database. So I click on these three dots right here. And here's my connections here. I'm going to scroll down here to all these things. And way down at the bottom there is I'm going to add a new connection right here. And I want to specify that this is a SQL Server using a connection. It already knows SQL Server, but I'm going to use SQL Server authentication. <clears throat> That's what's uh, used in my Azure SQL database. So the, I have this on my clipboard. There's my server name. The database that I want, if I go to, it's this one right here. DG Company is the name of it, so I'll copy that right there, get rid of any extra spaces. I've set up an admin, I called it my name right here. And for my password, I used P-A-S-S-W-O. I hope I didn't say that out loud. And I don't need a gateway. Gateways, if I've created it like back behind the firewall, I'm just going to Azure for this right here. Uh, now I've got a connection set up here, and I can specify that the name of the SQL server is from those connection settings. The name of the database uh, it's from those connection settings as well. It's DG Company. And the name of the table, I haven't specified yet. I'm going to say that here. And I have two tables in here, customers and orders. And if you look at the orders table, I've already connected to it here. It has uh, an ID that's the, 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 the identity column. In order for this to work, the table has to have an identity column. That's just a rule. Uh, a customer ID, an order date, which is an order date time field, a quantity, and a ship date, which can be null. And that's what we've got right here. So what I've set up here is a trigger that will fire off this workflow that I'm going to create whenever a row, an item, is inserted into the orders table in this database on that server. Then that'll fire off the workflow, which I have not yet written. Now that I've saved this, I can test it. And up in the top right here, there's a test button. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to say I will perform the trigger action myself. I'll click on test right here. And this says by saying I perform the trigger action myself, I am saying that uh, we'll start this flow working, running, waiting for the trigger, and then it'll wait for the trigger, which in this case is and insert a row into a database. So let me execute this. I've now inserted a row into here. If we look at that, we'll see the ID of the order ID is seven, customer ID is one, order date is that, quantity is two, and there's no ship date on there. So let's come on back to here. And it says here your flow ran successfully. If I go back here, or actually, if I click on this, I can see the inputs and the outputs. So right here, here's the order, 
click on to download, I can actually see the data that came out of SQL Server. And it's hard to read in here, but what's easier is in here, I have the value where I've concatenated order seven, cust one, quantity two. That's what I like right here. So I was able to test this. It's triggering, it's running successfully. Let's add another step. And in this case, we will edit, we'll come back to here and click on edit and add a new step. In this case, we're going to, the way we fulfill the orders is that we'll, we'll drop a file into a, uh, a OneDrive folder. How about that? So let's look for OneDrive right here. I'll write that. I'm going to say create file from this. And I've already signed into OneDrive. It may, if you haven't done that already, it'll probably ask you to authenticate and give permissions to your OneDrive account. If you don't have OneDrive, you can go to onedrive.live.com and sign up for free. Um, and uh, in my OneDrive, I've got some folders, and I've set up a folder called Flow Stuff right here. And that's the name of the folder it's going to drop into. The file name, I'm going to call it, um, uh, let's concatenate, quote, ORD underscore, and this order ID. How about that? OK. And there we go. That's the name, name of the file. And the file contents will be just that message, the order text customer order quantity in there. Let me save that. And I'll go back to here. And you can see there's some, uh, uh, th this view shows details about the view, the fact that it's running right now. You can turn it off if you want to. Um, it has uh, any runs that have done. Some of them were tests, some of them were actually run from the trigger. Uh, and any connections that we have are all right here. So while it's running, why don't I just go ahead and insert another row into this table. In this case, I'll say, let's put uh, 55 in there. Okay, so now order eight from customer one at that time has quantity of 55. What we should see is this thing kicked off seven seconds ago and it ran really fast and it succeeded. And because it succeeded and because I have a create file in here, I should see that file showing up in my OneDrive. So I'll sign into my OneDrive Like so, here's my flow stuff. And there is the file, it's named ORD-8. I probably should have named it ORD-8.txt so it would open properly. So, But let me just save it and then go to my downloads folder and open with Notepad++ and you can see there is the text right here. So in this video, I've shown you how to use Power Automate, formerly Microsoft Flow, to manually create a workflow. This is David. Thank you for.